Welcome everybody to the good old gamer Chris here with Joe and today we're going to be talking about RAM and why RAM matters. Uh, this came up because of a double whammy. TechSpot today uh, launched a new article where they went ahead and tested the brand new blazing fast DDR4 4000 megahertz um, memory just to see if it would yield any performance improvements. And then on the flip side, Joe over here, he's building himself a Z170 setup, and uh, he's been looking into memory. So, Joe, what's going on with you, man? And let's see how this all kind of relates. Well, it's yeah, it's not complicated. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that likes to, or really just wants to have the best. So whenever I go to purchase stuff, I, I look at what I'm purchasing, and I, I can't help but think maybe if I spend a little more, what would I get out of it? And, you know, and I know a little bit, and I know enough to know that there's not a huge difference between certain types of things. But when it comes to RAM, I'm looking at different products, and they have timings ranging from 16, 18, 18, 18, 38, to 14, 14, 14, 34, and at the same 3,200 megahertz speed. And I, I just got to wonder what the big difference is, if there is a difference, um anymore you know and then of course what if i jump to 3400 megahertz would that be beneficial uh you know jumping from 32 is only 200 more megahertz am i really going to see it you know is it worth the extra 30 to 40 dollars or you know because the problem is i don't want to be wondering when i buy the cheaper ram and just go with the loose timings if i'm not seeing quite some performance that i wanted and i'm going to blame myself that i didn't shoot for the more expensive better timings and that's kind of where I'm at. You know, I, you know, we, we've talked about it, and I know you've put me in a good place um, in terms of why, but and I'll I mean, you to explain that. And mostly that was because of the article that I read this morning. I mean, 32 mega, uh, 3200 megahertz, I thought would be more than enough. I actually didn't predict that anything uh, faster would really yield too much of a result. Um, just because we've been so used to using slower memory, especially with DDR3. Even even as early as last year, everybody would have just said, oh, DDR3 1600's just fine. It's just fine. Uh, it's a very recent thing where we've been noticing that faster memory actually does net su sometimes substantial uh, performance improvements. But uh, I figured at 3200, you pretty much capped that out. You know, that shouldn't be a bottleneck anymore and you should be just fine. But uh, yeah, TechSpot went ahead and tested uh, a 4,000 megahertz DDR4 kit, and it net some surprisingly uh, substantial gains there. I'm going to link the description, uh, the article in the description below, so you guys can check it out for yourself. But Fallout 4 was a big one. Over the, uh, the I think, 2133 they were comparing it to, it was like a 16 to 20 percent boost in performance it was huge that's so, a pretty nice boost yeah just from using faster ram and generally between 3000 and uh 4000 you know a range that i didn't think was gonna make too big of a difference there was probably on average between a five and a ten percent boost um through the benchmark that they did and that was surprising i, I was thinking maybe one to four percent at most but yeah, it was it was actually about double that, so it was pretty substantial for, you know, just using faster RAM. So this is something hmm. a lot of people don't really realize is faster RAM is a good thing. Now, granted, they were using a 980 Ti, and uh, TechSpot, the the guys who wrote the article, Steve himself has said, if you're using like a GTX 970 or a GTX 980 or a slower GPU, it's not really going to make too much of a difference because you're not going to be pushing enough uh, frames through your GPU anyway for it to really matter. Now, if you're using a high-end i7 um, with a high-end graphics card like a 1080, this would be a substantial boost for you. So generally, the faster your CPU and the faster your GPU and the faster your RAM is, just the faster overall it works. So if you're running really slow RAM and you have a top-end CPU and a top-end GPU, you're really just holding yourself back. You, because your CPU and GPU are just not getting enough data fast enough, essentially. Now, as far as RAM timings go, they they go over that in the article. They tested out uh, higher timings versus lower timings, and it's not a substantial difference. For the most part, it's just the straight speed that's the most important part. 
Now, I'm not saying go out and get, you know, Kingston value ram with, like, Kaz latency 74. Oh, he said that doesn't matter. No, if you see something that's just ludicrously high, don't, don't get that. But get the stuff that's kind of, you know, your average. And that should be just fine. Well, just for instance, like the timings I said before, you know, going from a 16, 18, 18, 34, or whatever it is. Um, 16, 18, 18, 34. I don't remember how many numbers there are anymore. I'm, I'm, it's kind of getting late and I'm tired. But the point is, like, going, I'm sorry, 16, 18, 18, 18, 38 to 14, 14, 14, 14, 34, assuming those numbers are correct. That's not a big difference, is what you're saying. The no. timing is less important than the megahertz, but then it would be, you know, how big of a jump do we need to make in order to see the performance gain that you saw? Okay, so here on Fallout 4, um, let's use DDR for 3000. Um, your average frame rate is 58, your minimum frame rate is 53, right? Now going to 3600, your average frame rate goes from 58 to 65. And your minimum frame rate goes from 53 to 61. So wow. you, you've just brought your minimum frame rate above 60 just by using faster RAM. Now going from 3600 to 4000, you go from 65 to 67 average. Not a big difference. And then you go from 61 to 63 on your minimum. So that's not that big of a jump. No, so 400 megahertz got netted an extra two frames per second. Yes, but 600 megahertz from 3,000 to 3,600 was huge. And now I wonder why that would be such a difference. You're talking 600 megahertz versus 400 megahertz. Because you're hitting the limits of your CPU and your GPU, what they need. Right. So now if, gotcha. we th now if they threw a, a, a GTX 1080 in this system, you'd probably see a little bit more performance on the 4,000 megahertz. Um, if they overclock the CPU a little bit higher, same thing. So the faster your CPU and GPU get at that point, the more beneficial that faster RAM will be. There you go. All right, well, that makes more sense. Yeah, so it's just like anything else. Something else will become the bottleneck at some point. But, uh, you know, just for so long, we didn't realize that RAM was a bottleneck that nobody really looked at it up until a few months ago. And... Uh, now we're looking at some really high-speed stuff, and, you know, I, even I discounted it. I was like, yeah, DDR4, 3000, 3200, we're getting to the point where it shouldn't matter. Well, apparently it does, because, yeah. uh, you know, just going from 3000 to 3600 on Fallout, that, that was a pretty substantial jump there. Yeah, I mean, it's really kind of amazing that this has somehow slipped under the radar uh, in a world of gaming where... You know, having that extra, you know, bit of performance is so damn important. You know, the benchmarks that people go through, you know, it's it's actually kind of amazing that we're just now going, oh, yeah, RAM does matter. And I, it's kind of, yeah, it's just shocking, really. I had no idea it was like this because I bought the Kool-Aid. You know, I drank the Kool-Aid just like everybody else. RAM's not important. No big deal. Um, but, you know, still, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I had these questions because, you know, with the information you, you looked into and found, and, you know, I feel better knowing this kind of stuff, and I feel better about my purchase now. So, that's, I feel better overall. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things that's becoming more and more prevalent. Luckily, people are starting to catch on, and I think uh, there's still a few people out there that still drink the Kool-Aid, and you see them in comments on articles like this just going, oh, no, you know... As long as it's over, you know, 1333, you're just fine. It's like, no, no, it doesn't work that way anymore. And yeah. like I said, it also depends on your system. You know, if you're running an old CPU and you're running a really old GPU, or even if one of the two components is really just hampering the other bits, it's not going to make that much of a difference. But if you're using top-of-the-line hardware, you're going to need pretty much the fastest RAM you could possibly get. Well, it makes sense, and I'm not using quite top-of-the-line hardware. I mean, a 6700K is, I guess, top-of-the-line for the moment. But uh, running with a 970, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So maybe if I upgrade, we'll see. Well, I mean, that's the point. You know, you're going to upgrade your... You'll upgrade your CPU and your GPU probably before you upgrade your DDR4 RAM. 
So personally, for me, I would spend more money on my RAM than I would even on my motherboard, on my CPU, or my GPU. Not total dollar value, I'm saying per category. Like I'd buy top tier RAM and maybe second from the top CPU and maybe second from the top GPU, you know? Just because that RAM, you know that's going to transfer into your next system. So in your opinion... Well, they have 3600 on Newegg. Cause really? I can't find it. DDR4 3600. I've looked. I, I cannot find it. How'd you find it? Okay, so using um, TechSpot's links on their conclusion page, uh, if you just go ahead and click on the uh, numbers, they'll go ahead and pull up the RAM for you. It does link directly to Newegg. So this, this way it will pop those up. So if anybody's interested in checking out these memory modules that these guys are talking about, go ahead and just click on the... Uh, the ones that you're interested in and it'll pop right up but alrighty guys this is Chris and Joe with the good old gamer if you have any questions or if you like this type of commentary go ahead and like subscribe the video and like I said go ahead and uh, leave your comments below and we'll try to get back with you guys but as for now have a good night have a good night thanks for listening